In this example, we're going to use DeepTrack 2.0 to track multiple particles in 3D. Hello, I'm Saga and I will be your guide for this tutorial. Let's go through example 5 where we use DeepTrack for multiple particle tracking in 3D. First, we import the objects needed for this example. And we load what we need to evaluate DeepTrack later. Here, we also specify the size of the images the network will be trained for, as well as specifying the vertical properties of the images. Then we define the dataset. The training set consists of simulated images. First, we define the optical device, where we approximate the experimental point spread function by adding comma operations with random strength. We image the particle with bright field microscope with numerical aperture of 1.3 and illuminating laser wavelength of 633 nanometers to simulate an inline holographic microscope. We also define the resolution and magnification of the microscope. The particles are simulated as spheres, and we define their 3D position in pixel units, as well as the particle refractive index and radius. And the number of particles is random between 2 and 8. Each parameter of the simulation is randomly varied around the experimentally expected values, making the network more robust. We then add noise and illumination gradient to the images, before normalizing them. And now we can visualize the training images. We then define the training label as a mask of the images where each particle is represented by a white sphere with a radius of 3 pixels in a 3D volume. And here we can see a few examples of the training data. Now that we have our training dataset ready, we move on to the network. Here we use a new net architecture. The network is compiled with a weighted binary cross entropy loss, such that setting a pixel value of 1 to 0 is penalized 20 times more than setting a value of 0 to 1. This helps the network avoid the very simple local optimum of setting every pixel to 0. And here we see the model summary. And now for the training of the network. If we keep train model as false, we lo load the pre-trained network that we have available for this problem. But if we want to train a new model, we change train model to true. Here we have a validation set of 256 images, and we use the continuous generator to continuously generate images during the training. With a minimum of 2,000 training images and a maximum of 4,000 and we use a batch size of 32 and train the network for 100 epochs. And now let's train the model. After the training is completed, we can visualize the training and validation loss. And now we evaluate our trained network. We predict the set position of a single particle trace in a video and compare it to the prediction from a standard off-axis method. Where the red line represents the prediction by deep track, and the green the standard off-axis method. And we see that the two methods validate each other. 